Thank you for having me, Anne. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, this is going to be a very interactive session. So uh, once again, I want to make sure that you guys have your cell phone and your pads of paper. We're going to be uh, making some lists. Thank you. Um, and uh, what I want to happen, or my goal at the end of this session, is to give you guys the tools to go home and start a legislative campaign to help this panel that we had before us and to address the issues that Dr. Cretella was just talking about. Um, I confess I'm a little bit intimidated by the fact that I'm following Dr. Cretella, who's been doing this for 10 years, and then, and then I'm going to be followed by Gail Rizika, who many of you know has been an effective advocate and ad, um, legislative activist in Utah for almost 40 years. So uh, it's a little bit intelli uh, intimidating, but Jonathan Gillum said, uh, when we got here the first night, when things are there at the worst, that's when real warriors get going. So I'm going to be talking to you ordinary people who really want to do something about this agenda. I'm going to start with a psalm where the psalmist is crying out to God to ask for deliverance from evil people, particularly um, murderers of women and children. The psalmist then, he recognizes his own responsibility and he looks out to the congregation and says, who rises up for me against the wicked? Who stands with me against the evildoers? Then he pauses and he turns to the Lord and he asks a rhetorical question. Can wicked rulers be identified with you, those who frame um, injustice by statute? And that's exactly what we're ha what's happening now. It's been referenced that um, we have conversion therapy bans taking uh, place all over the country. Here's a map, whoops, I'm sorry. Um, I'm supposed to be clicking and I'm reading this. Okay, okay, there we go. 19 states in less than uh, three years since 2017 have adopted these conversion therapy bans. And um, they prohibit, it's been mentioned, a therapist psychiatrists, school guidance counselors from providing therapeutic counseling that would otherwise help an individual recover from gender dysphoria. You can see that this is a very aggressive movement. Um, it's been referenced that it's well funded and it's just coming over the United States like a wave. So this is the bad news, but let me show you a picture of the good news. And this has happened within the last year. This is a picture of the states that have started um, we're calling them Vulnerable Child Compassion and Protection Acts. Um, and this is what's going to prevent doctors and others from prescribing these medications and from performing these surgeries. Yes. Yet, well, no, the green are the ones that are being introduced this year. Um, both Texas and Arizona are going to be waiting until 21 to, to introduce their bills. Um, actually, South Dakota is, was the first guinea pig. They've, they've gone forward. They've got it through the House, and now we need to pray that they'll get it through the Senate. And there's kind of a hiccup right now um, in, the, in the committee. It's kind of caught in the committee. We want to pray that it'll get out on the floor. It, go, it goes to committee February 10th. So let's keep them in there. Let's keep them in our prayers. So. There's a variety of ways to address the transgender uh, agenda. One of them is through uh, freedom of conscience for therapy uh, for therapists. There's also the fairness in competitive sports bills that are being promoted. The one that we're going to be talking about today is the uh, VCAP bill. Alabama has chosen to call ours Alabama Vulnerable Child Compassion and Protection Act. The reason we added that word is because we wanted to come on the side of those of being compassionate. You know, the left has a really, uh, they're really good at looking like they're the good guys and we know that they're not. We know that these are unjust statutes that have been uh, promoted. Most of the states call them the Vulnerable Child Protection Act, so when you hear them, it's just one word. And also, it allows us to use a, a kind of a neat acronym. We call it VCAP, so we can distinguish it from other bills. Okay. So now is when I want you to take out your 
your cell phones, and I want you to do a little research. If you will take one of these prompts, transgender clinics in your state, uh, city and state, um, transgender resources, LGBT healthcare, trans healthcare, hormone replacement therapy, and one of the most interesting ones that I found was the children's hospital in our uh, state. If you go to that link, that website, you can go to their programs, and in their programs, they're going to have an endocrinology department. And in, on our website, many of the doctors listed that their primary specialty was LGBT health. So those are, that's another one. Would everybody that can, that has a, an, a cell phone or a laptop, take a look? I'd like to see hands of people that find something in their state that show that they've got transgender clinics and they didn't know it before. If you have that, would you raise your hand? You did, 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 are there people here that knew that or did, you didn't know that? Does that surprise you? I know that about four months ago in Alabama, we did this research and I was surprised. I thought, I'm in a red state. I'm in a really conservative state. That's not going to be here. I remember hearing Dr. Catella for two years saying this, and I thought, nah, not in Alabama. And um, so I think there's, there's others of you out there that feel the same way. This isn't, you know, you're thinking this is not happening, but it is. It's happening everywhere, and we need to be ready, and we need to be aggressive. So what we need to do is get ready for a legislative battle. We want to resist those conversion therapy bans with um, therapist, uh, freedom of conscience for therapists, and we also want to address specifically these, um, this prescription of drugs and surgeries. So I'm going to give you a list of the people that I contacted. The first thing I looked for was some other model legislation. I didn't want to be the first one to develop it. I wanted to see what else other people were doing. And I found model legislation in ultimately in Georgia, Texas, and Utah. Gail had, had already started her uh, vulnerable child protection bill. Uh, there are other, pieces, other places that you can get model legislation, particularly Alliance Defending Freedom. They have a real good solid bill. Our particular bill is a little bit different than the other states. We have a provision that uh, addresses some of the therapist issues, and we have a parental rights um, provision in ours. So what I want you to do now, again, I want you to make another list and I want you to talk with the people at your table. I want you to talk about how to build a team because one of the most valuable things that we have done is we pull together other people that can help us because this is very complicated. This is not like your average bill. You kind of take a model bill from another state and you walk into your legislator's office and you say, here it is. This is going to take a, a lot of different types of people to help. And so, um, of course, we're very fortunate in Alabama. We have great uh, leaders in Alabama, Eagle Forum leaders, and that's my core team. But we also had a pediatrician. It happened to be my own personal pediatrician who had retired a couple of, not my personal, I'm sorry, my children's per <laughs> personal, <laughs> excuse me. Um, my, my children's pediatrician had retired and I thought, uh, let me just see, he's very soft-spoken, very quiet, and he came to the first meeting, he didn't say much, I'm thinking he's not going to get involved. Well, this man has single-handedly um, coordinated all the medical witnesses that we're going to need for our campaign. Um, at, at the same time, we also have a nurse on our staff, on, on our board, and Lori Herring, she's out here in the, the audience someplace. And she helped provide information as we were developing our bill with different language needs. Advocacy groups, that's a great place for you to find people that will come alongside and help you. They might even have their own model bill that they're already working on. And uh, lastly, you do need a, us. You need a, our, a, a, the 
attorneys to help draft the legislation, and I was very fortunate to find several other lawyers that were interested in drafting legislation who had those talents, and so together we put together a, a bill for Alabama. So finally, in developing your strategy, you're going to need witnesses once you get to the legislator, le legislature, where, where Fred is at uh, now with the South Dakota bill. You're going to need people who Endocrinologists are going to be very important because if they can show that they have been prescribing or know of children that have received these medications, the puberty blockers especially, as children, we can uh, guarantee that it's happening in your state. That's very important. You need pedi pediatricians, surgeons. In our case, we have a psychiatrist that has talked to and, and provided the talk therapy that will really help children overcome their dysphoria. Um, and I want to just say that the testimony that Lynn and um, Aaron and Walt gave are going to be the, really the most important. As you know, you're sitting here going, okay, well, I might get involved and I might draft a piece of legislation and try to push it through. But I know that that panel not only brought tears to my eyes, they were bringing tears to people all around this, this auditorium. And that's what you want to do when you get to the committee. You want to appeal to the heart and the compassion of these people that are considering whether or not. Because the, the truth is the medical people are coming in and they are going to have some very persuasive information. It's going to be heartbreaking for you to hear it because they not only have persuasive information, they lie. They don't, they don't really care that they tell the committee the truth if they can get what they want. The ends justify the means. So um, those, those testimonies are going to be the most important in your, in your legislative campaign. So now I want to end where I began with a psalm. This picture I was, is of the hills in Israel. I took it last week. Oh, thank you, sorry. Um, the verse, Psalm 121 says, I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Ultimately, whether we are successful or not is gonna depend on the Lord and as Dr. Catella said, the main thing that we need to be doing is praying and fasting. However, when ordinary people like you and me with warrior hearts step out in faith, we will be helped by the Lord who made heaven and earth. And the Lord who made heaven and earth also made them male and female. Amen? Amen.